Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. My name is David Blaine. In today's show, we're ta- focusing on taxes, especially the 2010 Tax Relief Act, its provisions and how they may or may not affect you. This time of year, most people start to get their tax information together, and we wanted to give you some good information uh, to, if you're doing it yourself, or going to a CPA, or maybe you're even one of our clients when you come in to see us to, to have you do your taxes. So before we do, uh, our phone number, 252-633-0107. Our email is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And our website is www.dlblain.com. We'd love to hear from you, comments, questions, topics you'd like to see on the show. Uh, let us know. So when we left off, we just finished up uh, talking about the estate tax. If you missed it, log on to our website. We'll have an archived copy of the show uh, up there in in a week or two. Let's move on to some Medicare tax changes. In the first show we did on the tax update, which was a week ago, we talked about the uh, changes for the payroll tax cut going from 6.2% to 4.2% for the Social Security portion of the tax. That was a cut. Now, there are some Medicare tax changes that um, were imposed earlier in the year. The Health Care and Education Reconciliation Act, um, the um, Obama Medicare, or uh, Obama Medical Care Bill, as a lot of people, Obamacare Bill, can't talk today. The Obamacare Bill, as most people refer to it. So these take effect in December of 2012. And the reason I want to bring these up now is a couple of reasons. Number one, if this may affect you, you may want to start planning ahead. And number two, which makes it really confusing. You just saw yesterday that a Florida federal judge actually declared this uh, law unconstitutional, the health care mandate portion of it. And so there is some question whether these provisions will go into effect at all. But we want to review it because someone came to me the other day and mentioned that this new law, when they sold their house, they were going to have to pay an extra tax for selling their house. And so there's a lot of rumors swirling around, especially on the internet, about what exactly this tax means. So let's set the record straight here. The Health Care and Education Reconciliation Act, uh, effective December or after December 31st, 2012, imposes a 0.9% additional Medicare tax on individuals making an NXX of $200,000 or if you're married, in excess of $250,000, your Medicare tax will go up by 0.9%. So it only affects people making those income limits or or higher. The next thing where most of the confusion comes in is also in years after December 31st, 2012, a 3% Medicare tax on what they call qualified unearned income Uh, for higher income individuals. This also, uh, people with excess of $200,000 for individuals and $250,000 for married couples. And this is a very confusing tax, but the 3.8% Medicare tax is imposed on the lesser of an individual's net investment income or any excess uh, above the $200,000-$250,000. Where a lot of the confusion comes in is where it says tax on qualified unearned income. And so what this would be would be earned income is when you show up to a job and you get a paycheck every day. Unearned income is things like dividends, interest, rental income, capital gains. Those are the big ones that that we'll focus on. And so typically when you sell a piece of property, a stock, a bond, or receive a dividend, there's no, uh, there's no Social Security and Medicare tax on it. This new law imposes this 3.8% tax on it. Um, so if you're in a high income tax bracket and you're making a lot of dividends, interest, and capital gains, you will pay an additional 3.8%. The big confusion is the sale of a home. Currently, a married couple can exclude from income up to $500,000 worth 
of gain on the sale of a primary residence. So, for example, let's say you bought a house in 1950 for you know $100,000, and you decide to sell it this year, and you sell it for a million dollars. Well, that's a $900,000 gain in simplified terms. Of that, 500000 will be excluded uh, from taxation. That additional 400000 that would be subject to taxation could be taxed under this new 3.8% Medicare tax rule. So there are some limited circumstances where it would apply to the sale of a home. But let's be honest, with the real estate market the way it is and things, this is not going to apply to most people. Most people will still be able to sell their home tax-free, and certainly if they are in the a lower tax bracket or they don't have a big gain in their house, there will be no additional tax. So when you hear something on the Internet or your sister's brother-in-law's cousin tells you something at a party, you know, make sure you get the facts, and that's what we're, we try to do on the show here is put out the facts, cut right to the heart of the matter so that you have the information you need to make these decisions. So that's a good summary on the Medicare tax changes. Uh, We're going to go into a break here uh, in just a minute. So let's recap. If you missed the first segment, the estate tax has been resurrected starting in 2011 for two years at a maximum rate of 35%. But now there's a $5 million exemption per spouse, so effectively $10 million per couple. There is going to be a 0.9% Medicare tax starting in after 2012, as well as an additional 3.8%. So we'll be right back for all things money. I'm David Blaine. <laughs> 